Yo, yo, yo. It's Jordan Brajot here from Chable Airbrush, and I just wanted to discuss with you my process in painting this spawn themed goalie mask. So, just like the Venom mask, for this design, I want to transfer my drawings onto the goalie mask and cut the designs from there. So, I'm going to cover the entire goalie mask in transfer tape. I try and keep the pre-mask as tight and wrinkle-free as I can, so I really push it into all the small grooves, and then I cut it when it starts to get too wrinkly. I also try and keep my overlaps very small, about an eighth of an inch, so that I'm not cutting through two layers of paper pre-mask. I now bring in my trace of the Spawn character, which I traced off of my computer. This is not an original piece of art, it is a previously drawn Spawn picture that the customer wanted. On the other side I have a Grim Reaper drawing. This one I did draw myself, which explains why it's not nearly as awesome as the Spawn drawing. To place the handle and the blade of the scythe where I wanted them, I ran a couple of pieces of tape and used them like a ruler. For the number 33 on the chin, I pre-drew them on a piece of paper and transferred them on just to size them and place them properly. Both of them are to look like torn cape from Spawn and from the Reaper, and I thought it would be cool to make them come across each other, so I placed the numbers in and then drew everything else behind it. On the back plate, he wanted this specific Venom drawing. Uh, this again is not an original piece of art, so I traced it and transferred it onto the already laid out pre-mask. He also wanted a couple of other numbers on the back plate, so I transferred them on and then I cut all the lines on the entire back plate. I'm careful not to press too hard when I'm cutting and I always keep a nice sharp blade to, to have nice clean cuts. Once the cutting is complete, I'm ready to start paint. So I take off all of the different sections in a particular color and work on all of them at once. I decided to start with white. I use only one color step of a medium gray and just use the airbrush to add the gradient. I then cover it with clear binder, which I always do when I'm finished the section. I let that dry and then I recover the completed sections with the pre-mask that I had set aside. I continue that process and now move on to the mouth and tongue where I use two different color steps, one for the shading of the tongue and the other to get the very dark color at the back of the mouth. For the rest of Venom's body, I remove all of the pre-mask for the section and base the entire thing blue. I then put some of the sections back so I can shade around them. I can then shade the backmost layer of the character, then remove the front layer of the pre-mask and shade them as well. When the whole thing is done, I cover it in clear binder. I let that dry and then I unmask the other completed sections and highlight the entire piece universally. Once that's done, I unmask the background so I can do the line work on the Venom character. I actually wouldn't recommend doing it in this order normally. I would say that it should be covered up completely and the line work can be done at the very end when the rest of the background is finished. But I was also recording these individual characters for videos for Instagram and I wanted to complete the character before moving on. Once the character is completed, I will cover the entire thing and cut around it off camera. Now we move back to the spawn character and using the same system of unmasking, coloring, and remasking, I start with the eyes, then move on to the white sections. I only use one color to shade within the white sections and I just use the airbrush to allow more or less color opacity. The blue section, however, is a little bit more involved, so I have to start with a base color blue. Then I come in with a lighter color to start shaping and building up where all of his muscles will be. There's also a red reflective light that gets added to him, and I also have to lift some of the other sections so I can bring it into there as well. Next is the dark blue section, and then I'm 
ready to cover that and do all of his spikes and skull pieces. I paint this with two different gray steps and also bring in that red reflective light color. For painting the red, I decided to do it in several different sections because I didn't want to remove everything that was going to be red and then get lost on where I was in the cape. So I decided to do sort of foreground, background in different sections. Much like the blue, I base with my medium red and then I bring in a lighter color to shape everything. I then have a dark red to help shade everything and for this I have an even darker color as well. A lot of the time I'm spraying the clear binder off camera. When the section is complete, I usually spray it and then cover it and move on to the next section. Here there was only one little section I needed to cover and I could spray the rest of the bottom of the cape. Then I am going to unmask everything and line this character as I also shot it for an Instagram video. For the line work, I'm using a 20 over 0 liner brush. I started brushing the outlines and I realized I still needed to brush in the chains, which I just freehand brushed in with my liner brush and then took the darker gray from the skull sections and shaded that freehand over top. The spawn artwork is so great and the inking is so crazy that it took quite a while. I ended up following the inking from the original picture fairly accurately, but when it came to the cross hatching and the detailing, I sort of just went on my own. Or at least I wasn't super anal about making sure every line was exactly like the original. After I have all the inking and line work done, I then universally highlight the entire image and also add some green smoke coming from Spawn's eyes. I then cover just the section that I need to so I can move on to do the number three that is coming from the Spawn cape. The red here is done the same way as it was everywhere else. I put the base color down, then the lighter one to build the shapes, bring in the first shade color, and then the second. Give it a layer of clear binder and then recover it with the transfer tape. I can also now put in the other pieces of the cape and cover up the entire spawn character. For masking off the upper parts of the spawn character, I actually switch from my usual pre-mask to this clear low-tack vinyl called Mac Mask by a company called Mac Tack. Uh, this is helpful because I can see through it a lot better than the transfer tape to make the cuts more accurate. The spawn had such cool flowing capes, I wanted to add something like that to the reaper, so I gave him some uh, arm bands and also tied some bands to hit the staff of his scythe. Starting with those bands, I removed the transfer tape, base them gray, and shade them gray. These are the same colors that I used for the skull sections on the spawn character. On this side, I'm using a green color for the reflective light. And I'm using light grays for the bone color in the hands and also the blade of the scythe. I add the reflective light color and then I'm good to cover up those gray sections as well as I spray in the orange color for the reaper's eyes. With a dark gray, I base the handle of the scythe and then I take an almost all the way black base the inside of the reaper's cloak and shade the handle. 
I hit them both with a bit of reflective light and they are good to be remasked. Just like I did for Spawn's cape, I just pull off certain sections of the Reaper's cloak so I do not lose the design that I've cut into it. I start to base all the open sections of cloak with my base color, which is a green, sort of a bluey green. And then I work it the same way as I did on the other side, and I bring in a lighter color to shape everything. Then I have a shade color to start to bring in all the darks. And then eventually I bring in an even darker color. And as always, I sprayed the completed section with the clear binder, and then I remask and continue from there. I like to pre-mix all of my colors in little plastic containers. I can then pour the excess paint back in them and use it again. It's much like uh, guys who use bottom feeder airbrushes that would switch in and out of colors, except for I don't have to deal with cleaning all of those containers afterwards. I also just use urethane based automotive base coat. I'm not using any water based paints uh, on my masks. I like the urethane based paints better. RM, PPG, House of Colors, these are all great brands, but I'm not necessarily brand specific. I just like urethane based paints versus water based paints. Now that the Reaper is done being painted, I can unmask everything and start brushing the outlines on him. I'm using some of the detail and cross hatching techniques that I used on the spawn side so that I can make both sides matchy matchy. Brushing with urethane based paints can be a little bit tricky because the thinner from the paint will actually eat through the layer below so you want to try and put down nice consistent smooth strokes. Uh, if you do more of a sketching motion, you'll start to eat through. If you're going with black over top of white, you'll start to see the white come through and mix in with your paint. So you really have to lay down nice, smooth, wet strokes. I like to use a piece of 6 inch bond mask paper as my palette. It's where I put the paint down onto the paper on the waxy side and I'll dip my brush in it and get my brush fully loaded on that as opposed to using a plastic palette or any of that. It's quick, easy, and disposable. So I just continue brushing the details on the Reaper and then when I finish that, just like I did on the spawn side, I come in with the airbrush for some highlights. But I think this is gonna be a good time to take a break and I'm gonna have to break this video into two parts. So hopefully this video has been informative and please stick around for part two which I'll edit up and put out soon enough. Uh, if you liked it, please uh, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks.